In this video, I'm going to walk through what it takes to create a good hash function. So before we decide what it takes to create a good hash function, it's probably important to understand what a hash function is. And so what a hash function is, is a delimiter that separates certain values into a data structure. And so I'm going to show you how this works visually and think of it as uh, being able to have nice buckets that you can put things in. So we have bucket one, bucket two, bucket three, and bucket four. So we have one, two, three, and four. So if we were to have a set of data, so say we have an array, and the array is made up of just these four items. So we have one, four, two, three, two, one, four, one. So this is our array. In a hash function, the way it would work is you would go through each item and you would designate it to go into a particular bucket. So you'd have one, 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 just like that. And for your fours, you have these two fours. Go just like here. I'm not doing this in any order, as you probably notice. And then our twos look like that. And for our lone three, there we go. So that's the way that a very, very basic hash function works. Now the problem with hash functions or half hash tables is that they can be incredibly fast unless you have to deal with a lot of collisions. And what collisions are are these things right here. You notice the three doesn't have one because it only has one item. Ideally, you want to have as few collisions as possible. So your hash tables have a uh, this, around the same amount of values going inside of them. In fact, if you want to write down a property, uh, the best definition that I've been able to see for what it takes to create a good hash function is that the function should provide a uniform distribution of hash values. And this is because a non-uniform distribution increases the number of collisions and the cost of resolution. That's just a lot of fancy talk for saying, say that this data was not what it is right now. So say that we had, and I'm going to erase this, and we're going to work on some different values right here. So we're still going to have our 1, our 2, our 3, and our 4 except we're going to deal with a different data set. So in this data set, we're just going to have one, say we have a data set like this, where we essentially have 90% of the data is actually the same exact value. This wouldn't be good because all we would have are collisions and if you remember back to the definition we want a uniform distribution. A uniform distribution means that we should essentially have the same number of elements in each one of these buckets. So each one of these should have as close to the same number of items in it as possible. And so a good way of doing this um, is looking at an example. So the example I'm going to use, and we'll get rid of all of this right here because uh, I'm going to do an actual real life example. This is what one of my professors at the university uh, taught when he explained how hash functions worked and how to create a good one. Uh, say that you wanted to organize students at a university. Uh, that you have a number of different options in terms of having something that... Uh, some fast way of looking them up. So if you have a student, so 
This is a student right here. There is a few different ways that you may be able to categorize a student. So you could probably say he may have a social security number. He may have a phone number. He may have a driver's license and he will have a student ID. Okay. Now when we're looking at a good hash function, remember we're looking for something that has a uniform distribution. And so phone numbers, even if you could assume that every uh, every student had a phone number, you wouldn't have a uniform form distribution because the majority of them, if they're local students, are all going to have what? They're all going to have similar area codes. So this is not going to be a uniform distribution, so a phone number would not be a good thing. Driver's license seems like it'd be a good one, except for the fact that you're dealing with students from different states and different and uh, they're in different parts of the world. One, you have students that are not even going to have a driver's license. So if you even have a single student who does not have it, then it's not going to work as a hash function because every element has to have this ID. So that's not going to work. And the other problem is you typically want to work with items that have the same numbers. Uh, there's the same count of numbers. So in other words, if you have a driver's license number from one state that has letters and then numbers compared with a different state that has a, a different set of numbers, this is not going to be a good hash function. So driver's license is already not good for a number of different reasons. Social security number would be one of the best options except for the fact that you have a lot of students at universities that are international and they do not have a social security number so that's not going to be the best option because remember every single student has to have this in order to be looked up. So that leaves the student ID as being one of the best options. It's something every student has and it also has a uniform distribution and what I mean by that is say we have uh, three students here. Say we have John, Sally, and Sam. They each have a corresponding ID and that corresponding ID is all going to be the same so the ID may be, so let's say, a seven digit number. So we can say 8765 uh, we'll just go with six digits, just keep it easy. And we'll go one, seven, nine, four, two, three, and then we'll go seven, two, four, six, two, eight. Okay, so why this, and this is all coming from the student ID, why this would be a good hash function is because each one of these items fits all the properties of a good hash function. They're uniform, meaning that every student has one. They have a uniform distribution, which means that these numbers are generated randomly. So they're all different, meaning that they should, by mathematical probability laws, if you have enough students, you should actually have the same number of students in each virtual bucket of your hash table, which means that your number of collisions should be minimized. And they also have the same count. So you have six items there, you have six on the second one and six on the third one, and so that matches there. So one of the best hash, hash functions for, uh, for a university student, as just an example, this could be used in a number of different operations, and it is because hash tables are incredibly useful in a number of different fields of computer science. Uh, this is a great way of generating one. These are the properties. Um, a big thing to remember is just making sure that the data and the values 
are as random as possible. They're uniformly uh, distributed, and they are available for every single item that needs to be searched for and categorized. So that's what it takes to make a good hash function. Please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever, and I'll see you in the next video.